Hey guys, welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit, Am I the A-hole? This one's from user Spits Like a Llama. Would I be the a-hole if I refused to be part of my in-laws family tradition? My husband and I have been together for almost six years, married for three. We have a one-year-old son. I love his family, but I struggle with the differences in how they treat their son, my significant other, versus their daughter, sister-in-law. Anything she wants, she gets. I don't start drama, however I will stand up for what I think is right and it occasionally causes tension. They have a wonderful tradition where they create a picture calendar for their grandma for Christmas. Every month highlights the people whose anniversaries or birthday it is. The rest is filled with loving memories. Since we got married, I am now in a couple of the photos. I felt loved to have been included in such a tradition, but last year caused issues. Our son's birthday and our anniversary fall on the same month. No one else shares anything special with this month. His parents told us we could design that page with the three of us however we like. I choose four photos. One of our son just born, one of us as a family, one of him with his great grandma, and one of just my husband and I. We create the page and send it. We stop by one night to continue helping them. My husband is better at doing it online than them. When I realize my sister-in-law has swapped out one of my photos for a picture of her with my son. I made a comment about how that is not what we designed and she tells me she likes it that way and wants to use that photo. At this point in time she is in roughly 75% of the photos in the book. 12 months, each with 4 pictures per page, 48 photos, she is in almost 36 photos out of 48. Has a whole page dedicated to just her, and a good portion of her photos are of just her. I suggest she take out one of her photos from a previous month and use that one instead. I then changed it back to the photo I wanted. She ushers us out of the house. Christmas comes around and the calendar is brought out. She has changed it back to the photo she wanted. I was furious but let it go because 1. It was for grandma, who I adore, and 2. We didn't pay for it, his parents did, and sister-in-law chipped in a little bit. We offered. This year I offered to help with the calendar again and get told she has a special idea for this year. She wants to do recreation photos. Take an older photo and using the same people take the photo again. I think it's a great idea and understand that it means my son and I won't be in it. I'm sad but still offer to help. She declines. Then I found out she wants to do half the book with special recreation. She wants to take some of grandma's old photos and use the new generation to recreate them. I think this is great and now my son and I can at least be in one photo. Nope, she wants to be her grandma in every shot. Wants to use my significant other as grandma's husband and my son as my father-in-law as a baby. They have no use for me. I mentioned this makes me upset and I want to be a part of this tradition and upon her parents pushing she tells me I can take the group family photos. Would I be the a-hole if I tell them no? That if I can't be in it I don't want anything to do with it? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Bunch of consonants and one vowel says I hope your sister-in-law reads how many strangers think she has behaved like a total a-hole. You're about to get a tidal wave of not the a-hole. Maybe you should print out all of the comments on one page and arrange them prettily for a new 13 month a-holery. In turnaround says, not the a-hole. She really has taken this fun thing and made it her own little fiefdom hasn't she? How petty of her. Do your own project. Send grandma a nicely framed photo of you and your lovely family to make up for the lack of you in all the calendar this year. If anyone asks, insist that she didn't invite the family to participate, which is true as she specifically excluded you. Don't be loud about it, don't get into arguments about it, just do your own thing. That's the best revenge. OP responds, we are creating a picture book based around our little guy's first year for her. My husband and I decided that we will just do our own thing. Mom to two cats says, not the a-hole, in fact, why are you allowing your son and husband to be used as props in sister-in-law's self-love fest? She wants it to be all about her, so let her. Why don't you make a lovely calendar for grandma with you three, the in-laws, 
and anyone else grandma loves. She then has the option to remember everyone or just sister-in-law. OP responds, Grandma loves the calendar and I don't want to ruin that for her by forcing my husband and child to not be included. However, my significant other and I decided we will do a picture book of our son's first year for her. Kind of our own project instead. Smiley face. Yes, OP, I agree with all the commenters. You are not the a-hole and it sounds like your sister-in-law is. The way you describe her, she sounds conceited and selfish and it's all about her and you know, her having the spotlight and everything. Conspiracy theory. Maybe she's jealous of you because you had a baby and from what you tell us, it doesn't seem like she's either married or have family. So maybe you kind of took away some spotlight because you made her parents grandparents and she feels threatened. But that's just my opinion and hypothesis. Anyways, we have a short term update from OP and then we have a 5 month later update telling us everything that's going on now around Christmas time. OP's short update. Wow, this has taken off. Thanks for all the love. So, a few hours after I posted, my significant other came home for lunch and inquired as to why my phone was blowing up. I told him. He was angry. Turns out sister-in-law told him a little about the ideas and that the whole family was involved. He assumed that meant me. He is now refusing to do anything unless I'm part of it and that our son will not be in anything unless we are a part of it. Unless it's a generation picture he asked grandpa and grandson. Said I am his most important family. Now he wants nothing to do with the calendar. I am trying to talk him into talking to his parents first as this is a lovely tradition. I just want to be a part of it too. OP, sounds like your husband has his priorities straight. And also, apparently your sister-in-law doesn't consider you family because she told your husband that all the family was involved, except you. Okay, so now let's move on with the 5 month after update. So I promised a lot of you guys to update you on what happens so this is the basics. Middle of summer, my husband's parents, without prompt, sat me down and asked me to recreate one photo of my youth to be part of the tradition. Then, they asked me to do a recreation of a family photo, but with the new generation. They told me I was part of the family. I told them I would love to, however, we wouldn't have to do it soon as I was starting school in September and would be busy between schoolwork and raising a child. During the year, my sister-in-law was having a lot of issues, so everything got put on hold and we were told the calendar probably wouldn't happen. Not to worry about it, so we dropped it. Two weeks ago, right before the start of my end exams, I get told they now want to do all the photos. Except, I can't because I am overrun with work, school, and some medical news. I may have cancer. I find some photos of me as a teen in a pirate costume and then a new one of my husband and I dressed as pirates. But she won't accept it. Find out later on, she did her own pirate shot after. Find one of her parents and my husband in the hospital just after he was born and then sent her one of us and our son just after he was born. She refused as it didn't quite match. At that point, I'm burnt out and done. I politely tell them I feel so honored they want me in but I just cannot do it these two weeks and that I totally understand if they want to proceed without me. Instead, they push me to do one. Come over to my house the night before an exam and guilt me into doing one I didn't want done. Borrow my husband for just 10 minutes. Try one to two hours at the time. Right when I need him the most. Then add in they need him for a few other nights too. When I tell them no, I need his help studying, watching our son while I study, the sister-in-law throws a small fit about how important all this is. She even tried to guilt my husband about not doing more. So I just stopped trying. So to sum it up, his parents made me feel loved, my husband has been super supportive, my sister-in-law had her own crisis, which I do feel bad about, but that stopped everything and last minute is imposing her demands at an incredibly stressful time while not willing to take any of our suggestions. But my husband and I are almost done with the book we made for his grandma and it doesn't feature much of her but a lot of our son, family and grandma. Love you all. Have a Merry Christmas.
Wow, OP. First of all, I hope that the news you get regarding your illness is that you do not have it. Second, your sister-in-law just keeps getting worse, doesn't she? This is one of those people that you recognize you might be petty when you kind of wish they had something coming in their life that would teach them humility or something. Hopefully karma will hit her upside the head someday. Either of your two suggestions were great and either would have worked, but no, she had to have it her way. Ugh, annoying. Anyways, I hope you did great in your exams and that your health is okay. Happy holidays. This one's from user businesscautious5392. Am I the a-hole for requiring my sister to sign a legally binding contract before I loan her money? I, 42 female, have a successful career and inherited a decent amount of money from my late husband. I'm nowhere close to being a millionaire, but it's enough so that, as long as I'm smart with the money, to only work because I want to by the time I hit 45. That's including any college expenses my two children may have in the future so long as they go to a state college. Family knows that I have money, and while I don't mind giving a couple hundred dollars here and there because I know I most likely won't get it back, I draw the line at anything $400 plus. They know this, but that still doesn't stop them from trying, and I've always stayed firm on this. Well, once restrictions started, my brother-in-law, 35 male, lost his job, and my sister's, 37 female, job have reduced her hours until further notice. Two weeks ago, I got a call from my mother asking if I could come over. I had no problems with this and swung by the next day and found my sister already there and I could tell she had been crying. Based on the title, you all know where this is going. So with me, her and both our parents, there my sister informed me that even though her job was expected to go back to regular work hours in early 2021, there was a rumor that they would also be downsizing. She wasn't sure if her job would be secure, and brother-in-law still hasn't found any luck in getting a new job yet. I knew what they wanted, and tried to play dumb at first, and offered to help find brother-in-law and my sister jobs. My sister said that that was very generous of me, and she would take the offer, but in the meantime, what they really needed was a loan. My sister asked for at least $40,000 to help with paying off their credit card, manage the mortgage, make payments toward their student loans again, and still have some money left over in case the worst happened. I was quick to tell them that they were asking a lot of me, that while I do have some money, I didn't just have $40,000 laying around to give out on a whim. I told them I'd have to check my finances and think about it. After two days, I started getting inquiring texts from my parents and sister and told them that I was busy this week and that I'd let them know over the weekend. I checked the numbers and it was cutting it a little close, but it was doable. However, I still didn't like the idea of just giving the money away without any reassurances that I'd get it back. I drew up a rough draft of a contract and emailed it to my sister, stating that I was willing to give her money after she signed the final draft and that the money would have to be given in three separate installments. My family was furious, said that as the older sister it was my duty to look out for my sister in her time of need and to make her sign a contract was offensive. I countered with that since my sister has never paid me back whenever I loaned her money since the day I married my husband, I think this was more than fair. Everyone is still angry with me, so I just wanted a more neutral perspective. Am I the a-hole? The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. MM18600 says, not the a-hole, but don't do it. Don't lend money you can't afford to lose. Even with a legally binding contract, if your sister doesn't have any money, who are you going to sue to get it back from? It doesn't sound like you are comfortable losing this amount of money, which realistically, you probably will. V2Den says, not the a-hole. Even with a signed contract, you may never see that money again. In fact, I very much doubt you will. Why you ask? They want to use part of that money to pay off credit cards, 
which tells me they were living beyond their means. And the fact that they need $40,000 loan to handle stuff like mortgage tells me they have no emergency fund in place. Two likely outcomes if you loan her the money, even if she signs the contract. One, she doesn't repay and you have to take her to court. Two, she doesn't repay and she files for bankruptcy. Either way, you will never see that money again. You really need to think about the a few hundred here and there. If that happens often, that adds up too. J Hercules says, not the a-hole, especially since your sister has never paid you back. 40k is some people's salary for the whole year. I would make her sign a contract too. If your parents are so mad, they can lend her the money. You have your own family to worry about. Opie's edit. Wow, stepped away for a couple minutes and I wanted to say thanks for the support. Also, I keep seeing a few of the same questions pop up, so I'm going to clarify and mention a couple of things. One, my sister and her husband can't get a loan from the bank, or at least not much, because their credit isn't the best right now. Two, to my sister and brother-in-law's credit, they did have some savings but are burning through them since my brother-in-law is currently out of work and my sister doesn't work enough hours right now. Also, they have kids. Three, after I got married, my sister started making little jokes that compared to what my husband makes, what's a few couple dollars to family every now and then. Over years, I gave my sister at least $2,500 that she never paid back. And I just stopped counting after a while because it would get me upset. I just made it a habit to stop giving her money. Although I would still pay whenever we went out to restaurants, the movies, or the spa. Edit 2. Okay, had to step away again for personal stuff, and when I checked, I saw even more responses, all talking about how I would collect my money if my sister either refused or couldn't pay me back. I left that part out because I wanted to focus on just the idea of the contract itself rather than the technicality part. As previously stated, I emailed my sister a rough draft of the contract and was planning on having it notarized so that it was official but as collateral, I would get ownership of her and my brother-in-law's cars, if they couldn't pay. Hope that clears a few things up. Okay, OP, first things first, you are not the a-hole. Second thing, she is not your responsibility. Also, what they did to you sucks. They put you on the spot. That was an ambush and your parents were in on it. Like a commenter said, if your parents are so adamant on you helping your sister and you don't want to, why don't they do it? It's their daughter, right? You are under no obligation to lend her the money. And if you end up wanting to, asking for collateral is just the smart thing to do. Now, if everybody's so offended, maybe you ask for a co-signer. Let's see how your parents like that. If they want your sister to get the money, they can co-sign the loan. And if your sister defaults, they need to cough up the money. But anyways, that's just my opinion. Let's move on to the update to see what happened. Thanks to all the wonderful and helpful comments. I won't lie, familial pressure and guilt was getting to me a little because I realize how fortunate I am. I also want to apologize for downplaying my socioeconomic status. I just have been living beneath my means for so long, I sometimes forget how fortunate I truly am. I just wanted to show my children the importance of being financially responsible and rarely ever splurged. In the end, I contacted my sister and brother-in-law for a sit-down public so they couldn't cause too much of a scene, but private enough so we could vaguely discuss sensitive information. Plus, there was the social distancing thing. I simply did a basic laydown of the situation. I told them that I needed them to hear everything I had to say first, and if they interrupted me, I would walk away and not give them a cent. First, I told them that it is good to help family when you can, but couldn't give them $40,000. I am able to offer them $3,200 a month for at least six months. I told them that I simply can't afford any more without it affecting my kids and that I am a mother before I'm a sister or daughter. I also told them that I can't afford to bail them out every time they're in trouble and that since the future is so uncertain, I may not always have the means to care for others. 
my money is going to have strings attached and if they didn't like it, they could go somewhere else. I made it clear that I wasn't doing this to be mean or controlling, but I want to help my sister help herself. The rules were A. The money would be deposited in a new joint bank account with one authorized signer. B. My sister and brother-in-law were going to meet with a financial advisor, which I would pay for. C. Since neither of them are working, it doesn't make sense to have two cars. So I expect them to sell one of them and then our parents can let my sister or brother-in-law use one of their cars when they need it. D. Before they can get the first payment, they will be having their meeting with the financial advisor and I will be in the meeting just so I know they went. I made it very clear that this is the best that I could give them. They looked upset, but I told them that beggars can't be choosers. They said they'd think about it. I knew that my sister was going to cry to our parents, so I called them as soon as I got in the car and told them everything. I said I am not changing my mind, and that if they feel my sister needs more than what I'm offering, they're more than happy to downsize and sell their own home or take out money from their own retirement and SSI since family helps family. Edit for info. I keep seeing this so just so we're clear, the $3200 a month is going to be a gift and I told them that. I don't expect to ever see that money again, but I'm never going to give my sister and brother-in-law another cent after this and I am prepared to go low contact or no contact with her over this. I know my parents will never go low contact or no contact with me because I'm their first choice when it comes to taking care of them when they get too old to take care of themselves. Edit for info 2. Forgot to mention that I don't really want sister and brother-in-law to sell one of the cars. It's just my way of putting pressure on brother-in-law to get a job. Any job. He has a master's and was making, I think, around $75,000 at minimum and now he wants a job in the same field making the same amount or more. If we weren't in the current global health situation and he didn't have so much debt, I'd understand him wanting to hold out for something better. But right now, you gotta do what you gotta do. OP, you are awesome. I mean, I respected you from the first post, but now I respect you a whole lot more. You're amazing. The plan is really well thought out. And you're actually helping your sister learn to manage her finances properly because obviously from what you told us on the first post, neither of them can. Hopefully their pride doesn't get them to think about it too much and just accept the generous offer that you're handing out here. Anyways, there's not much more for me to say here, so all the best OP and take care. This one's from user Throwaway Kilot. Am I the a-hole for blowing up at my friend who constantly makes comments about my breasts? I have big breasts. I'm currently at 52 kilos and there's nothing I can do to change the size of these things unless I have surgery. I'm also extremely shy and from a very conservative family so my resentment and shame towards my bust is an ongoing issue. My friend Sarah is one of those unfiltered free thinkers who says whatever is on her mind. She's also slim and her chest is very much in proportion to the rest of her body. We work together and I'm always secretly jealous of how great shirts and tops look on her, whereas I feel I look very sloppy and unprofessional with oversized ill-fitting clothes. Sarah has this way of always bringing up my breasts in conversation, starting off complimentary but often ending with a subtle insult. She knows they're a physical feature I'm uncomfortable with but doesn't let up. Examples of things she'll say is how my breasts look good now but give it a few years and they'll be down to my knees, ha ha ha. Or she'll show me comments on reddit where people are discussing chest size preferences and most are commenting how they much prefer a smaller bust over large. Or just a general reminder of how work or men will never take me seriously because of my cartoon boobs. I know she's trying to have light-hearted fun, but it gets to me and I've told her a few times to drop it before. Now, we're working from home. We all have daily video calls and meetings. Uniform is not necessary and can wear what we like. A few days ago, it was extremely hot and I was wearing a lighter, more revealing top than my usually baggy cover-ups. 
During this video call, in front of six other colleagues, Sarah starts vocalizing her thoughts on my appearance. Holy crap, put those things away! You look like you're in a porno! We don't need to see that first thing in the morning, ha ha ha! I was mortified. One other colleague laughed along, but the rest looked uncomfortable. I felt close to tears, made an excuse and left the meeting. Sarah called me up half an hour later asking me what was wrong and I went off on her. Told her to go F herself and was sick of her constant jabs about my appearance. I went on a 10 minute tirade and hung up. Sarah has been off sick since that day and we haven't spoken again. I'm wondering if I was too harsh and maybe should call and apologize for my outburst? Was I the a-hole? The judgement is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Lyra Terra says, absolutely not the a-hole. On a work call? That's workplace sexual harassment. If it ever happens again, contact HR. You don't need to wait to tell HR. You should feel encouraged to do it now. You have witnesses who were clearly uncomfortable with the situation as well. The choice here is yours. Banana Pepper says, not the a-hole. As a fellow large busted lady, they are not in proportion to my body type and size, comments make me uncomfortable too. She's probably making jabs because she's jealous and insecure, but that doesn't excuse her behavior. You told her to stop and she didn't and then made everyone else uncomfortable with her comments as well. She didn't listen the first time, so she deserved the 10 minute lecture. Wispy Woods said, Not the a-hole, this is sexual harassment. Opie's edit, I'm fuming. I just spoke with a colleague, John, who was part of the video call that day. And he told me that Sarah's been telling everyone that it's me that's been bullying her and making her feel insecure about her appearance. When she made those comments during the meeting, it was in retaliation to how I've made her feel. Apparently, I said she looks like a boy and called her flat chested and ugly several times in the past. I have never and would never say this. I don't even understand the stupid boy body insult because a small bust has always looked very beautiful and classy in my eyes. Anyway, John knows she's full of crap and has suggested we speak to HR. The others will also back me up. I know most people here suggested I do this and I wasn't sure at first, but F it, I'm reporting her. I don't know why I ever considered her a friend. She's effing mental and annoying. I now feel stupid for even asking the question am I the a-hole? I thought I may have been at one point because the video call was amongst mostly workmates rather than clients and I wasn't sure if my sensitivity towards my body image made me overreact to a joke that could have been innocent. I now realize it wasn't. I've also spoken to another co-worker who is closer to Sarah and she thinks Sarah may have already reported me to HR. She said the phone conversation we had after the meeting was filled with abusive bullying language and physical threats. It wasn't a pleasant phone call, but the worst thing I said was she go F herself and that I don't want to speak to her again. The rest of the conversation was just rehashing all the comments she made about my body and how it made me feel. She also claimed that I have been making inappropriate jokes about her appearance and work ethic, huh? Through the years and this confrontation was a long time coming. She also suggested that I've convinced the guys in the office to take my side by being a flirt and a tease. Did I mention that I'm stupidly shy? My head is swimming and I think I may be dealing with an actual psycho. I don't know how it's come to this ridiculous level of craziness. All I wanted to do was get on with my effing work in peace and get through this crappy time. But now I have to deal with this BS. OP, I agree with all the commenters. This isn't right. She is the a-hole, not you. And you should definitely get a complaint and get as many witnesses as possible to back you up. She's never been your friend. And like one of the commenters said, I honestly believe that all that bullying that you get is because she's jealous of you. But that's just my opinion. In any case, we're gonna move on now because OP has given us a lot of updates. The first few updates are short term, and then we have a final update that gives us closure to this whole thing. Update. Just to answer a few questions I've seen. I've contacted HR with my complaint. I have a lot of old text messages and emails with comments and memes Sarah has sent making fun of my chest size. 
John and other colleagues are fully supporting me as well as my manager. It will take a while for them to get back to me, but I'm confident that things will be sorted and Sarah will be dealt with. My breasts alone aren't 52 kilos, 114 pounds. My overall weight is 52 kilos. I mentioned this because my chest seems much larger on my small frame, making clothes that others wear and look nice in look completely gaudy and cheap on me. I can't lose any more weight to make a difference on my bust size. I won't get surgery, but I have been working on my body image issues, which my shyness and upbringing did a number on. People's comments don't usually devastate me as they once did, but Sarah obviously tried her best to break me down. Thank you all for your clothing suggestions. I will definitely look into tailoring some tops and have spent some time checking out Bravissimo, which looks great. In hindsight, I should have confronted Sarah more sternly in the past, but I guess I was trying to avoid conflict. Others have suggested I may have allowed her to gaslight me, which may be true. I just want to move on at this point. Update 2. The co-worker, Lucy, who keeps in contact with Sarah and told me earlier that Sarah may have reported me to HR, has just phoned me to tell me that Sarah has suffered a serious panic attack. Lucy does not want to take sides but has suggested I reconsider taking drastic action. Sarah is too unwell to talk to me herself but has asked I drop my complaint and she will drop hers, citing the whole thing as a misunderstanding and stress-induced disagreement. I have had panic attacks before in my life and I seriously felt like I was going to die. It's a horrible feeling and if Sarah has honestly just had one herself, I don't want to push her too far. I still want to address her comments over the video call, but I'm wondering if I should just drop the other complaints. Sarah has asked to move teams so we don't directly work with one another, but it doesn't seem she wants to apologize yet. And just to clarify to people who assume I was wearing a bikini top or boob tube during the meeting, I wasn't. It was a short-sleeved plain t-shirt which hugged my breasts more than my usual baggy tops. I don't like to hold grudges and I think getting her fired during a time like this may be a crappy thing to do. I feel she has already punished herself by displaying this effed up behavior to others and losing a lot of respect from co-workers. If we don't ever have to interact with one another, I'm up for that. I have a suspicion that Sarah may have found this post and read it which I thought I would feel bad about but I really don't care. Last update. I'm not dropping any of the complaints. Sarah, F you Michelle, and I have spoken. And although it started off promising, she is mentally unhinged and without a conscience. I did not realize how deep her hatred runs. Not only did she mock all those things I had told her in confidence about the way my family treated me growing up, she accused me of effing every guy from work to get ahead. Now I know where some of those fake office rumors about me came from. I've been such a naive idiot and allowed my shyness and aversion to conflict to stop me from fighting people who manipulate and walk all over me. I don't need this misery in my life. If she's reading this, get professional help immediately. I know you desperately fancy John and, as you said, despise the way he looks at me. I know it bothers you that he took my side and has been a great support. Maybe I will go for drinks with him when the lockdown ends. OP, good for you for not dropping the complaints. You need to teach this girl a lesson. She needs to learn that bullying in the workplace is wrong and you need to learn to be more assertive. Additionally, and as a commentary because some people that I know have had this problem, large breasts in time can give you back issues and very strong back pains. So I suggest that even though you don't want to do it, you may look into having some sort of surgery that can help you reduce a little bit of weight up front so that your back doesn't suffer in the future. And that's all I have to say about that. So now, let's move on with the final update to see what happened. I took into account the advice offered and I thank you guys for your help. HR meeting call with supervisor went well. The main incident in my original post wasn't recorded, but all six colleagues wrote a statement confirming what Sarah had said and how inappropriate it was. I didn't realize, but John had also asked others who work with us if they, at any point, heard Sarah attack my character or physical appearance 
in a cruel or improper manner, and if they did, would they be willing to write a statement? Apparently, she has been saying quite a few outrageous things behind my back, and it seems that a lot of the hurtful office gossip about me did originate from her. I submitted a few examples of messages and emails sent by Sarah during work hours, taking jokes about my appearance too far. I also included the messages where I asked her to stop causing attention at work as I am extremely uncomfortable with others regarding me in that way. Her claims of my bullying her and calling her flat chested and ugly at work were dismissed as she couldn't specify dates or find anyone to corroborate her story or even provide any examples of me ever being hostile or unprofessional. The phone call we had after the video team meeting where she claims I used threatening language against her was also disregarded as no recording was ever made and it was her word against mine. Luckily, I don't think they believed her on this point as I've never displayed anything near the type of aggressive behavior she was accusing me of and my character references had me down as the quiet sort who gets on with work. While things were being reviewed, Sarah decided to quit. She's still adamant that I bullied and threatened her and felt no choice but to leave the toxic environment I created. I've been reassured that there was no wrongdoing on my part, except that I should have reported things much sooner when inappropriate comments first started. From what I gather, Sarah's general behavior at work has raised concerns for a while, and I wasn't the first to complain about her. Some people were confused as to why I had considered her a friend in the beginning. When I joined the team three years ago, it was my first job out of uni and I was incredibly nervous, but Sarah was the first to ask me questions and offer to hang out. She was a bit overbearing and rambunctious, but I appreciated her efforts to get to know me and coax me out of my shell. We often did have a good laugh despite her sometimes making a joke at my expense, but I tried not to take it to heart and occasionally reminded her to wind it in and be more considerate of my feelings. It's only been during the past 8 or so months where she's become especially rude and callous. I still refer to her as a friend of sorts, but I never thought she would take things as far as she did. Edit. Thanks to everyone for the kind words, advice and encouragement. It's really blown me away. I stepped away to talk to John for a while and let him know what a great guy a lot of people think he is. His little smile was adorable. Despite the misery at work I had to go through for a while, everything has turned out pretty amazing. I do love my job now that I can actually get on with it without the office drama. Finding out how my other co-workers feel about me has been incredibly reassuring and we've now set up a weekly virtual pub night. My outlook has improved massively and I'm taking steps to manage my anxieties and put aside past negativity. Good for you OP and good riddance to that coward who quit before getting fired. Hopefully her next possible employer will ask for references and you know, character traits will be transmitted. Hopefully she'll learn that her behavior is not okay and that you cannot just go around shaming people for how they look based on your own insecurities. So now I'll just say all the best to you OP, I hope you keep enjoying your work and make more friends in the workplace. Take care. This one's from user completely concerned. Am I the a-hole for grounding my stepdaughter? I, 51 male, married my wife, 46 female, 6 years ago. We now have 4 wonderful boys, 5, 3, 2 and 4 months. I also have a stepdaughter, Ellie who is almost 15. I have always gone running in the mornings and often my favorite time for running is right when my youngest tends to wake up. My wife usually gets the kids up and gets them ready, but she works a night shift so I don't want her getting up 2 hours after she goes to bed. To solve this problem, I decided that Ellie should help out more. She gets a pretty big allowance for doing not that many chores and I figured giving the kids breakfast wouldn't be too hard for her. Unfortunately, she has decided that 2am would be a wonderful time to go to bed and therefore isn't up at 9 when the kids get up. She told me this and I basically told her tough luck, she should go to bed earlier. She said that my kids weren't her responsibility and I should just take care of them myself. 
I reminded her that they were her siblings and she should just go to bed earlier. I also reminded her that she receives a generous allowance and that it could definitely be reduced. She says that she already does a huge amount of chores. She doesn't. She absolutely refused calling me a selfish a-hole because I can't quit running to take care of my children. The thing is, I wouldn't have to quit running if she would just grow up and help out a little. I grounded her for her use of language and for being disobedient. Now she's mad and my wife says I should have been kinder. So am I the a-hole? The judgment is, you're the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. 19PJ19 says, yeah man, I have two wonderful stepkids and one wonderful biological kid. You sounded like the a-hole right off the bat. Why can't you just wake up earlier to run? Jojo Cruz 206 says, quote, I have four wonderful boys and a stepdaughter, end quote. It's obvious you harbor no love for your stepdaughter and I'm sure she feels this as well. She is not required to care for your children. And if you wanted her to take on more responsibility, did you, I don't know, consider talking to her about it? Or did you just unilaterally decide that this was now her responsibility? You're the a-hole. Loomzy says, you're the a-hole. She's not your nanny. And unless you pay her $30 an hour, her allowance means crap. You expect her to get up and parent your children every morning because you want to prioritize yourself? A-hole. Your disdain for her is evident and I understand completely why she's never bonded with you. Because you've never truly accepted her. Look after your own damn children. Opie's edit. To the people calling this parentification or whatever it is, this isn't that. Parentification is absolutely abuse but this is just me trying to get her to take some responsibility for her younger siblings. Edit number two. I don't dislike Ellie. I tried to bond with her when she was young, but she always insisted that I would never be her father, so I stopped trying. She's my wife's daughter. Yeah, OP, you are absolutely the a-hole here. You're going about this completely the wrong way. First of all, it is not her responsibility. These are your kids. If your wife can't give them breakfast, then it's on you to do it because they're your kids. If this means that you need to stop running at that particular time of the day, tough luck. That's what you gotta do then. Now, trying to use her allowance as a way to leverage her into doing things for you, that's not right. My question on this one would be, does that money come out of your wife's pocket or your pocket? If it does come out of your pocket and you feel that Ellie is getting money for doing nothing, then don't give her money. Let your wife do it. In any case, it's clear that you don't like Ellie that much, which is really sad. So just in case you're wondering, yeah, you're the a-hole. Now let's continue with the update to see what happened. Yes, I am definitely the a-hole. After reading through the many, many comments and PMs I got telling me I was a horrible person, I have to admit, I was feeling pretty defensive. I didn't think I was a horrible person, but everybody was telling me I was. Then, I decided to actually sit through and read every comment I got, and I slowly started to realize that I really messed up. When I first married my wife, I was thrilled to have a stepdaughter. I had always wanted a daughter, and I was so excited to finally be a dad. However, I didn't think about how she would have been feeling. Ellie has a father who she's very close with. But I never stopped to think about how she would react, all of a sudden, to having a stepfather in her life. I expected her to treat me like her father without realizing that she already had a father, and I had done nothing to deserve that role. I expected too much from her too soon, and when she didn't immediately start calling me her dad, I stopped trying at all. Instead, I had other kids, but she never apparently became close with them either. She has a stepmother and step-siblings as well as half-siblings in her father's family. And she's extremely close with all of them. I was so jealous of her attachment to them that I never bothered to think about how I messed up the relationship I could have had with her. I talked to Ellie the other day. I apologized for the way I treated her and apologized for grounding her. She said it was okay, she shouldn't have cursed at me, but she didn't want to take care of her siblings at all. I'm buying a treadmill and Ellie is moving in with her dad. That's it. By the end of next month, she is going to be gone. This isn't how I wanted this to end. 
The boys are distraught over losing their sister. My wife isn't speaking to me. Even the dogs can feel the weight in the air. And it's all my fault. I don't think I'll ever be able to build a relationship with her at this point. I threw away every chance I got to become close with her and now I'm out of tries. Thank you Reddit for helping me get some clarity. OP's edit. Many of you are telling me that I definitely need to keep speaking to her. And I plan to. While she might not be my daughter, she is a part of my family and I do not want to part on bad terms with her. I spoke to Ellie earlier and she expressed that she would be okay if I was just like an uncle instead of a dad and that is good enough for me. I've been trying to spend more time with her lately and it's been going okay. She said that she doesn't want us to part on bad terms because then things will be awkward and that would suck. We're gonna make stir fry later. Edit 2. We made stir fry. Then I taught her how to make chocolate frosting. And we talked. A lot. At first it was awkward but it got easier. Ellie talked about her dad and her stepmom and her siblings. She has 11 siblings. She told me that she has so many siblings they blur together. She doesn't have a 5 year old, a 3 year old, a 2 year old and a 5 month old brother. She has younger siblings. I found out that Ellie has a Reddit account. In fact, she regularly participates in Am I the A-hole. She saw the original post. She saw me get torn apart in the comments. She told me I am a jerk and I agreed. She saw this post too. I asked her if she wanted to put a comment down. She said she doesn't want me to know what her account is called. I asked her if family therapy would be okay. She said yes, as long as we also get Starbucks. I'm okay with that, even if it means I have to drink that birthday cake in a cup that apparently passes for coffee. I hope this keeps happening. I enjoy her company. She's a bright kid. Well OP, I guess that's kind of like the best result you could have hoped for. You're gonna be an uncle. That's cool, right? Hopefully through the years you can improve your relationship with Ellie and become more of a close-knit family. Maybe therapy will help you guys like you say. In any case, it's great that you're actively gonna stop being an a-hole stepdad. This one's from user CTGDZSBTFS. Am I the a-hole for wanting my son to be the ring bearer at my wedding? My 29 male fiance, female 28 and I are getting married next week. Don't worry, everybody going is required to get a bug test and will be socially distanced with masks. My son, male, 6, is from a previous relationship and I have 50-50 custody over him. Me and his mom are on friendly terms and she is okay with him going to my wedding. The problem is my fiancé had told her niece, female 9, that she could be the flower girl. When my fiancé's nephew, male 8, found out he became extremely upset and threw a fit. My sister-in-law demanded that her son be the ring bearer or she will not be attending the wedding. My fiancé is extremely close to her sister and was upset that she would not be coming to the wedding. So she also became upset and sided with her sister, stating in her words, this is my wedding and it happens by my terms or not at all. You can imagine how angry I was at that statement. I have a bit of a temper so I left before this turned into a worse all out screaming match. I am unsure on what to do because I want my future wife to be happy at her wedding. But I don't believe excluding my son is a viable option. So Reddit, would I be the a-hole if I told my wife that my son is going to be the ring bearer to my wedding no matter what her spoiled sister thinks? The judgement is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Beckdog19 says, not the a-hole. And holy crap, do you really want to marry a woman who's going to put her entitled family over your actual son? This behavior isn't just going to magically change once you're married. She cares more about what her sister thinks than what you think. Norcat says, not the a-hole. But your fiancé's attitude is really concerning. Like evil stepmother level of concerning. Regardless of how the wedding plans shake out, Keep a close eye on that please. Unihorn Whale says, Not the a-hole. The sister is being extremely unreasonable and has no right to dictate any of your choices. Her feelings about your wedding don't matter. Anyone who says any version of my way or the highway is not ready for marriage. If you can't compromise and or talk things out, your marriage may be doomed. Call her bluff, both of them. 
Tell the sister you're sorry she feels that way and she will be missed. If your soon-to-be wife is willing to call the whole wedding off because you want your son to be involved instead of her nephew, let her. Her sister and nephew should not matter more than you and your son. OP responds, thank you for the reply. And yes, I plan on sitting her down tonight after work and explaining why I feel that this is unfair and wrong and hope she has a change of heart. Or else, I am sorry to say that I'm single again. OP's edit. I have offered my sister-in-law to have her son be the second ring bearer and she essentially laughed in my face and told me if I wasn't gonna make sacrifices to be part of their family then I don't deserve to be marrying her sister. Edit 2. I am going to have a talk with my fiance tonight to determine if this is something we can move past or will this be the end of our relationship. Because I will make it abundantly clear that my son is the most important thing in my life and if she does not respect him, then she will not be the stepmother to my child. FYI, the statement, this is my wedding and it happens by my terms or not at all, happened during an intense argument between me and her where I also said some questionable things, so I don't want her to be pictured as a completely unreasonable person. She also treats my son well and she is not abusive to him or me as some of you are suggesting. Okay OP, first things first, no, you're not the a-hole. Second, there are a lot of red flags, so let's just take care of the few big ones. The fact that your fiancé said, this is my wedding and it happens by my terms or not at all, regardless of whether that came out in the heat of the moment or not, it is how she truly feels about it. That this is her wedding. Now, I understand that the bride is the center of attention in the wedding, and that's fine. But this is your wedding too and it should be 50-50, not just her wedding and happening in her terms. So if that's the way she feels, I would say, then we're done. No wedding at all. Second, who does your sister-in-law think she is? Throwing her weight around at your wedding and you're supposed to make sacrifices for her family and you don't deserve to marry her sister? Then so be it. Let your fiancé deal with her entitled sister and if she doesn't like it then they can both kick rocks. I don't like bullies or entitled people and this sister is both of them together. I would be on high alert with that B because I don't think this is the first time she's going to try to intrude in your relationship. Be careful. But of course, this is just my opinion. So now let's move on with the update to see what happened and if there's a wedding or not. First off, I want to say thank you to everyone who commented and messaged me. Your answers were insightful and helpful. Now on to the update. I have just finished having a conversation with my fiancé. She was extremely distraught and crying as she felt horrible for the way she treated me and my son. She said that I would be better off without her. She said she had just been so stressed from the wedding and work that that night she just lost it and she knows that is not an excuse. I explained to her that the way she treated my son was unacceptable and that for me to be confident in our relationship going forward, she needs to be absolutely sure that this would not happen again. And I would like to uninvite her sister from the wedding. The only reason I feel comfortable with this is because she has been nothing but lovely to my child. She agreed, and now my son is the ring bearer and my best man, thanks to your suggestions. Along with my brother. Her sister will not be attending our wedding and the niece will arrive with my fiancé's parents instead. I also had a conversation with my son, without the presence of my girlfriend, to know what he thought about her. He said, and I'm paraphrasing here, Lexi, my fiancé, is super pretty and nice and she makes really good chicken nuggets. I agree. My fiancé and my future in-laws have also decided to go no contact with my future sister-in-law due to what she tried to pull. Again, I would like to thank everyone who responded or DM'd me. Your support means a lot. Well, OP, this is the best outcome I could have hoped for you, especially because you're marrying someone that makes really good chicken nuggets. That's a win in my book. Also, because your fiancé seems to be smart enough to understand that her sister is an a-hole and that she was just stressed and properly apologized. It's a good thing that she's self-aware. Also, props to your future in-laws for going no contact with their daughter because she's an a-hole. So all that's left to say is, congratulations, I hope you guys have a lovely wedding and a fantastic marriage. As for the rest of us, there's still some time so I'm going to squeeze in another post. 
let's move on. This one's from user Baked Goods. Am I the a-hole for having pot cookies out in the open in my own home? This is an ongoing situation and I'm currently writing this as my niece is having a full-on meltdown, so I apologize for any mistakes. Today was my day off and I decided to whip up a badge of special cookies. Cookies that have wheat extract in them, so I can snack on them for the weekend. After they finished baking, I left them out on a cooling tray so they can set. Just as I finished cleaning up the kitchen, I hear the doorbell and went to answer. And surprise surprise, it's my sister with my 8 year old niece and husband. It's been a while since I've last seen them, so it was a happy surprise. I let them in. The smell of cookies is still in the air, and a niece goes bolting towards the kitchen. I instantly go chasing her, and as I round the corner into the kitchen, Nies had just grabbed a cookie and was about to eat it. Quick on my feet, I swooped in and grabbed the cookie out of her hand, saying that these were adult cookies, which caused Nies to start freaking out. My sister followed in, and I explained to her that these cookies had pot in them, and assured her I was able to take the cookie away from Nies before she had eaten any. She instantly blows up at me saying I shouldn't have pot cookies out when there are kids in the house. I explained how I had just finished baking them and they were setting and the fact that I didn't expect any children to be around. I am a single man with no kids. She asked if I had anything that wasn't laced and unfortunately I didn't. By this point Nice has locked herself in the bathroom and is crying. Then, my sister gave me a big old lecture about having drugs in reach of kids, while I stand on the premise of, there wouldn't be an issue if I had even known they were planning on dropping by today. She called me a huge irresponsible a-hole, and I responded, well maybe if you taught your daughter to not just grab crap, we wouldn't be in this mess. She left to try to get niece out of the bathroom, and I'm sitting here typing this. Am I really the a-hole here? Like, I can understand not having drugs out in the open with kids around, and I never would if I had known there were going to be kids around. Also, before I get any flack, I'm in Canada and weed's legal here. The judgment is not the a-hole. Now let's take a look at the top comments. Sapien Slut says, not the a-hole. It's polite to give people a heads up before you drop by. By 8 years old, you should know not to take things without asking. And locking yourself in the bathroom over not getting a cookie is ridiculous behavior for an 8 year old. Vray says, not the a-hole. With all the mediums to connect with people, why would you ever pop over unannounced? What if you hadn't been home? What if you'd been in the middle of something? Would you then have to be talked down about having adult fun in your own house? when you didn't expect anyone to come over? Man, she should be so lucky it was just pot cookies. Election Assistance says, I was really, really prepared to call you the a-hole, but she tossed a kid into the house without checking that everything was okay for there to be a kid or getting you advanced notice at all. Not the a-hole. As strange as that is for me to say in this case, Sounds like your sister is mad that she did some bad parenting and taking it out on you. Absolutely agree with all the points OP, you're not the a-hole and it doesn't make any sense for me to go into any of them because the three commenters said everything that needed to be said. So now, let's move on with the update to see what happened. First, I would like to apologize for my non-responses. I got pretty high after my sister left and I completely forgot about the post. It's been a few months and I logged onto this account accidentally and noticed a few messages asking for an update about this. So I thought I would oblige since the post blew up like whoa. Thank you all for reading and a special thanks to the people who gave me awards. For a while after the post my sister was on a tirade trying to get everyone to agree with her but thankfully most people were on my side. Even my staunchy Catholic parents said she should have given me a warning before just dropping by, saying she knew I was a pothead and it was rude of her. Which was surprising since my parents are not okay with me being a pothead. I linked her to the original post and about a few days later she apologized and realized she was in the wrong and said she was sorry for freaking out, but still maintains weed shouldn't be in reach of kids but has admitted that she should have given me a heads up. We had since mended our relationship and she actually now texts me when she wants to visit, 
so that's a win. I had also apologized to my niece, promising Kit treats to be kept at my house for any chance of her visiting again. I now have a bunch of normal cookies and whatnot just in my cupboard. Of course, not revealing why the cookies were adult cookies, even though she really wanted to know what made them adult cookies. Turned out, she was freaking out because I yelled at her the first time I raised my voice towards her. Which makes sense why she freaked out so much. And we're back to having a friendly relationship too, which is nice. Well, it's all good news, OP. Your sister understood that she was in the wrong and now she's letting you know before she drops by, which is fantastic. And you're back to having a nice relationship with your niece too, of course, having cookies in your house for whenever she wants any, which is very nice of you. And that's it for this video. If you'd like, here are other videos from my channel that you would enjoy. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.